monitoring elite uh, heart rate variability each morning for a morning readiness scale was really, really good at um, developing the impact that poor lifestyle can have, whether it be bad sleeping habits, um, highly stressful periods, might be exam period, um, uh, fight with friends or, or partners. So it, it, HRV, I think, is really, really good at building the awareness on the impact that stress can have on the body. And this graph, which is just something I've drawn up, um, you've got your tissue growth, which is at night time, um, probably when the athlete's in deep sleep, they've hit their peak of testosterone. Um, let's say it's just before midnight. Um, cortisol will inversely be at an all-time low for that period of the day. Um, although when they are in a highly stressful period, it might be a football match, it might be, a, a, you know, a uh, they just got sacked from their job, um, it might be public speaking, it could be anything that's causing um, stress to that body where cortisol is going to be released to be able to cope with that acute level of stress. Um, inversely, for whatever reason, uh, testosterone goes down. So this is our first benchmark slide. Um, like I was talking about a little earlier, for those that missed um, my intro to this. So this is, these are, um, a, it's a benchmark um, system that I've created where in the red, you've got uh, a general population. So an area that your thoughts, your own personal internal dialogue might be an issue for yourself. Uh, and this is a, an area that you might want to, or you've identified that you want to improve. Um, so in your playbook, um, there's a couple of questions around vulnerability, uh, whether you see it as a, embrace it as a strength or a weakness. Um, this is another thing that Ben Crow is really strong on for um, culture and, and club culture towards performance. And um, one area that um, both Port Adelaide and Richmond and a few successful clubs recently through the Resilience Project or, or Ben Crow, they've really embraced uh, vulnerability. Um, getting in and same in my time at Hawthorne, um, your players would, would get up in front of the whole club and, and talk about an area of their life that was the most challenging for them. And that's an area that depending on how you respond to that stressful period, it could be post-traumatic gr um, growth or it can be post-traumatic stress. So we're gonna move into nutrition now. So Simone Austin, for those that don't know her, she's a sports dietitian. Uh, she wrote a book called Eating Like an Athlete. Um, and I recently interviewed her on um, my Instagram page. Um, and we discussed all things around sports nutrition over her 25 year career. Um, and it was really, really insightful. Um, so for those that are on Instagram, um, feel free to check out um, my IGTV area. Uh, and that was just last Wednesday. So it should be the first one that pops up. Um, and she's worked with the Australian cricket team during the Ashes and World Cup. She's worked with Melbourne Storm for a couple of premierships. She was involved with Hawthorne's three-peat. Um, Melbourne City and Western Bulldogs. And um, yeah, so she's worked with elite athletes in, in all different sports at all different um, levels. Okay, moving over to sleep. So the expert I chose in this area was um, Matthew Walker, who's a um, neuroscientist and, um, and studied so, neuroscience, sorry, and psychology. Um, and his book, Why We Sleep is a Ripper. So if you're interested in um, it's quite an interesting um, read. If you're interested to learn more about sleep, um, Matthew Walker's um, book was the best that I've um, read on sleep anyway. Uh, I think he has been interviewed on someone on podcasts as well. Um, so where sleep fits in, it's our number one for recovery. Um, and we want to focus on making sure that we're training hard, but then we're recovering really hard as well. So getting in that quality sleep um, and just like with Simone's thing with nutrition, um, where it's trying to add in as much color as possible, one area um, with athletes is, is being aware that there's there's times that really challenge their time to get to sleep. So I thought we'd start with, with GPS. Obviously, it's had a huge um, influence on the game, particularly quite recently. Um, it measures the most high risk activity, which is your running on legs for footballers. Um, and we take into account time. Um, and, and that allows the 
you know, for us to make comparisons towards the density that a player has made. Uh, for example, here, player A, although played an extra 30 minutes, uh, he only covered an extra K and player B. And previous to GPS, the coaches and players and staff and everything would think that player A um, should be a lot sore and, and, and a lot more fatigued from his game. When in fact, now that we understand GPS and, and how, how important de- uh, intensity is and how demanding that is on the body, it wouldn't surprise me if player B, although he played 30 minutes less uh, game time, due to his work rate, um, may be sore and more fatigued from his game. So we need to respect the density. Um, and that's something that GPS has shown for us and, and, and proven that um, work rate and an athlete's ability to cover the ground in short periods of time um, needs to be respected and also trained. In terms of periodization, um, I mentioned Andrew Russell a little bit earlier. Uh, he came from a track and field background and they used in track and field what's known as a funnel periodization, um, where essentially the closer and closer you get to game day in, in your preseason, um, the more specific your loads um, become. So I've given you guys today just to get a bit of an understanding on what that means. Throughout a typical preseason, these are last year's um, Box Hill um, on average team loads. So between November and December, 60% of the 10Ks that I was talking about before, that aerobic running, the, where you're moving above two meters per second, 60% of that was done in the football program. So six Ks was done with footies. Um, between November and December, four Ks were done on the sidelines with the conditioning guys. 